So welcome back to another FIFA 22 career mode video. Today we're talking about manager career mode for FIFA 22. Yesterday we spoke about player career mode and all the features and all that kind of stuff coming to the game mode. And now we're talking about the manager side of things, which is going to be featuring, of course, the creator club stuff, which is probably the main upgrade here for career mode this year on the manager side. Now on this channel, we always talk about the latest FIFA 22 news. So if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you are subscribed to get everything sent straight to you. Today's video is sponsored by Mule Factory. If you want to get some FIFA coins, check out Mule Factory. The link will be in the description. If you use my code VAPEXFOOT, you also get 5% off. So I guess we'll start with the pitch notes because it feels like a lot of things were said on the player crew mode side of things, but not enough on the manager side of things. But uh, the main thing here, like I said, was the creator club. That's what they touched on the most, plus some extra little details here and there. So in FIFA 22, you now have the ability to create your own team in manager career, which is something I know a lot of you have been passionately requesting over the years. Club identity, you'll start by picking your club's name and nickname, which will be used by the commentary team. I swear EA better have made those commentators record Vapex FC, because if I have to choose a preset that does not match my club at all, I'm going to be very, very angry. It says next you'll choose the league you want to play in, after which you'll choose the team you want to replace. So you can join any league you want, but you have to replace one team from that league, and that team goes to the rest of the world category, and their players though will still be available for purchase in the transfer market. The number of teams participating in the league stays the same, while the team you replaced goes into the rest of the world. Yeah, we just said that. So you can choose any league in the game, carving your path to glory from the bottom tier of a country's league system or playing against the world's biggest teams in the top league. You will then choose a rival club from within your league. So pretty much you can um, you know, start in the fourth division in England, or if there's a national league, you can start there. Or you can put yourself amongst the world's biggest team straight away. It's all up to you. You will then choose a rival club from within your league. Matches against your rival will be treated with higher importance in our broadcast experience and benefit from additional news coverage and stories. Okay, that's nice to hear. Next up, we have kit, crest, and stadium customization. You can customize your team's home and away kits, the club's crest, as well as your home stadium. There is plenty of variation to choose from, and you don't need to fear that your team is running out of style. Kits, crest, and your base stadium can be changed at the beginning of every new season. That's nice as well. Every new season, you can update your kits, crests, and your stadium. So you can have new kits every year, which resembles real life as well. I know a lot of people hate the fact that you have like licensed kits and you've got to use them for 15 seasons in normal career mode. But now with your creator club, you can change your kit every season at least. All right, so here is our first clip. So you've got, let me just uh, pause that there. We've got customized home kit, away kit, customized crest and stadium. That is what it's going to look like. Club info, replace team, select rival. Okay, so this is like the setup thing. So we're up to about here in the setup. And uh, let's see if it goes into it. I think it should. Okay, so we've got the kit thing. You can do primary color, secondary color, tertiary, name and number. That's nice. And you've got Adidas gear as well. I don't know if there's Nike. Is it just Adidas? I don't know. But so far, so good. At least it's not generic branded stuff. It's nice to see Adidas there as one of the kits. And uh, as you can see, you know, the selection is pretty good. We've got this generic PSG look. Trying to rip off our PSG. <laughs> and also, let's see what else we've got. All right, so you can change the colors there. So you don't have to do just blue and red. You can change it from there. And it looks like they've gone to red now. So you can see all the different presets. It's just a matter of finding what colors you want to do. And there's also the crest thing here. So you can change the shape. Let me just go back. So you've got all these different designs you can pick from. Obviously, you can't import anything with a USB. You have to use what EA gives you. But it looks like there's a lot of variety here as well. So it's not too bad by the looks of it. But obviously, you can't do option files or anything. There's a... Uh, other designs there. Pretty good stuff. We're really excited to bring stadium customization this year. Pick from any of the base generic stadiums in the game and really make it your own. You can choose its base color, seat color, and go deeper with changes such as the pitch pattern and net shape. The atmosphere around your club can be changed as well with a wide selection of goal songs, crowd chants, and walkout anthems to capture your club's identity and style. So that's nice as well. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, presets and stuff that we can pick from for these departments. Stadium customization is also available for existing clubs that don't have a licensed stadium in the game. That is also great news as well. So if you're playing with Barcelona and they don't have their stadium, you can actually use this feature for them. It's pretty much any team that's dealing with generic stadiums in the game. So makes sense, I guess. All right, so we've got a stadium customization clip. Let's take a look. So we've got the home stadium, the stands, the pitch. These are your tabs at the bottom. So let's see, we've got a stadium here, and I think it's Union Park Stadium. You can rename the generic stadium, of course, and you can select from all the other ones there as well. So we move on to stands, and you can't actually upgrade the stands like individually, like you can in free football manager games out there. 
you have to just work with what you've got here but you can change the stadium color and the seats as well so you can change the seat color um, whatever color you want there there's different options and there's also the pitch so you can change the look of the grass and the net here's the grass patterns and as you go through it it'll change the diagram on the right the nets are the same you can do diagonals different colors all that kind of stuff and uh that's about it for that one. So not too bad. I would have liked to be able to upgrade the different stands as well. If you're starting out as a small club, maybe pick a small stadium and then every season upgrade to a bigger and better generic stadium with more seats and all that kind of stuff. I think that'll make more sense. So now we've got squad builder and a brand new team needs players. And that's why my favorite part of creator club is the squad builder. Here you'll be able to populate your new team with a starting group of players. When generating these new players, you'll have control over your squad star rating and the average age of players. Before you commit to your new squad, you can play around with the various settings until you find a squad that you want to start your journey with. The nationality of the generated players in your squad is based on the nationality makeup of the players in the league of your choice. For example, let's assume that 7% of the players in the Premier League have French nationality. Each time a player is generated for your squad in the Premier League, there's a 7% chance they could be French. This keeps squads feeling authentic no matter what league you choose to play in. So we've got the squad builder clip here. And as you can see, you can pick from one star to five stars. That will affect the players on the right and their overalls. You can choose to have a young squad, age, transfer budget. You can go up to one billion, I think. Board expectations, you can be youth focused, but you can tinker with that. And there's also the other different types of board expectations under there. So let's play this clip. You can see how the things change on the right depending on the stars. And uh, if you go with a three star, you get more 70 rated players, which makes sense. And let's see what else they do here. So you can do balanced squad age, seasoned squad age. So you'll probably get more older players and veteran as well. Very young. So I guess it opens up a lot of opportunities here to do different kinds of saves. And uh, yeah, transfer budget up to 1 billion or you can go down to 1 million. So that's pretty nice, but that's about it for that clip. Of course, if you press triangle, you can regenerate players. So that's interesting as well. After setting up your squad, you can also choose your starting budget and go from humble beginnings or create football's next big spenders. As your transfer budget can start as high as 1 billion of your chosen currency, you can then use your budget to sign new players to strengthen key positions as soon as you begin playing. So yeah, you get your budget, you can sign whatever players you want after that. Board priorities. Last but not least, you'll be able to change your club's board priorities. These priorities can dictate the objectives you will receive in all categories. Note that domestic and regional priorities will be influenced by your team star rating as well. For example, if you start a career with a three-star club in La Liga and a high-priority domestic objective, you will have an objective to avoid relegation in the first season, given that your team is one of the weakest-rated teams in the league, and a long-term objective for a top-four finish in four years. There are a variety of board priority presets built into the club creation flow to help you find the right philosophy for your club. If you want to experiment, you can also tweak each individual setting to hit your sweet spot and make each playthrough feel fresh. So we've got the clip here for priorities and you can see we've got youth focus. You can also do small club as well, which changes the bottom presets there as well. And there's also a global giant or something, football giant, which changes the different things there as well. So it depends on what you want to achieve with the save. You can also do custom there, which we just saw. So let me see that one more time. Yeah, you can do individual customization there, which is probably what a lot of people will do, but it all depends what you want to achieve, like I said. Now, one question I have with this thing is, can we actually create our own players and use them in the game, or are they just going to generate players for us every time we do this creator club? Like, I wanted to get people involved in the community and, uh, you know, create names based on my fans and stuff, but I don't know if I can do that with this setting here. We'll have to find out, I guess. Now another thing for career mode, manager mode, is going to be a refresh transfer negotiation cinematic which should provide a better vivid experience as you try to get the best deal possible out of the negotiation. So you can see that the guys are just sitting back, we've got a few extra little things here, the jersey there, the guy chilling there, the guy walks in, the guy looks at him and he goes, good to see you, thanks for coming. It's the same sort of things here, uh, sell on clauses, all that kind of stuff, transfer fee, player swap. Um, not really too exciting here. It doesn't really make a difference for me, this kind of thing. It's pretty much the same thing anyway. Next up, we have expanded stories. One of our goals for FIFA 22 is to better celebrate achievements and career milestones. So for manager mode, if you win or reach 100 matches, 50 matches, you'll get something in the news. If you win the manager of the month award, you get a news tile or something. And it's also when a youth player from your squad has a standout debut season. When a player from your squad wins the golden boot, 
when a player becomes the clean sheets or assist leader in the league, when you or one of your player's goal projection is to break a competition goals record, and when you or they finally succeed in doing so, you'll get this kind of thing as well with your player and their involvements, their goals, all that kind of stuff there. So it looks like the new section is going to look the same. You'll just get fresher tiles for records and stuff. Now, next-gen platforms, these accomplishments aren't just celebrated in the news. We've also added pre-match intro sequences in which the commentator team will pick up on what you have achieved. New cinematics such as new team warm-up sequences, locker room moments, teams inspecting the pitch as well as the groundskeeper making last-minute preparations will build up the tension for important matches ahead. If your team is underperforming, you might even see the crowd leaving early, which is a fantastic feature to have as well because we spoke about this so many times. If you're getting pumped 5-0, you shouldn't have a full stadium. But yeah, like they said, locker room moments are going to be in career mode as well for manager mode as well and new warm-up sequences. They've also added new reveal cinematics when you get a new manager job and we've also updated transfer announcement news to take place at the stadium, not just in a press room. That is also nice as well. So you're going to see uh, transfer news or announcements in a stadium plus when you join a new club as a manager, you'll get a new cinematic, which is like a reveal. I think it's going to look similar to this kind of clip here from the trailer. They've also improved the quality of screenshots taken from the match in the news you receive when you return to the hub in order to make the stories more specific to your match experience. And last but not least, they've also added goal news from elsewhere commentary in English with former England and Arsenal player Alex Scott providing minute-by-minute -minute updates to matches that are played simultaneously. We're using the latest technology to make sure that the transitions between the commentary team and Alex Scott sound as natural as possible. Now we've got dynamic tifos as well, so... We had to previously rely on existing player art in fan tifos, but that is now a thing of the past. In FIFA 22, if a player becomes one of the top rated players in the team, or if they have a long tenure at the club, they can be used in player tifos displayed by fans ahead of an important match. And that means any player, including generated ones. So if you have a massive, mad generated player, you can have a tifo of him there before the game starts as well, which is very cool. And finally, there's the inclusion of the Europa League Conference League. So that's going to be good for Spurs fans and other additions will be announced at a later date. And I guess that's pretty much it for the career mode, manager mode pitch notes. So I don't know if there's going to be more information coming, but it looks like the creator club stuff is the biggest thing for career mode this year. Not much else in other departments. So this is what Sahil had to say, and he's pretty much right. You know, it's not the complete package, this stuff. There's a lot more things EA could do, and I guess we'll need to make some more dedicated videos and stuff. But Sahil says, career mode shortcomings. Same manager ratings system, no job offer mechanism change, no stadium upgrade possible, no increase in manager customization options, no manager sacking of AI teams, no talk on international management and World Cup achievements, no sponsors, which was a big one as well, especially for Creator Club, you need sponsors, no trophy record for managers, except a new style once, new questions in press conferences, sorry sir, Scout, fitness coaches, basically staff members, upgrades from FIFA 07, sorry sir, once again. So he's pretty much right, there's a lot of things here missing, but I guess it's like a nice little start, it's a nice little foundation and, you know, they can build upon it as the years go by, but if you're going to do a creator club, you need to copy those free football manager games, which have a lot more features than what EA is doing at the moment. So whenever I get a super thanks comment, I like to put them at the end of the video as like a shout out. And today we've got one from Avalanche, so thank you very much. Now, if you want to put stuff like what do you think of career mode this year or FIFA questions or your opinions and stuff, maybe you can add that to the comment and we can do like a general discussion. But that is pretty much it for today. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like for me. It always helps. And please check out this FIFA video as well. Hit the card in the middle. It'll take you straight there. I'll see you next time.